Hi, everyone. Welcome back to What the Hall. In this week's episode, I'm going to give you a roundup of some of the gems that I got in the summer sale. Cue the music. Bum, 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 bum. I love my intro. I love my intro. But if you're new here, just based on that intro, you should get a temperature of what we're doing here. Predominantly, this is skincare related, fragrance and all of that jazz. But sometimes we're going to talk a little bit about fashion because this is what the hall, we're multifaceted people. We have varied interests. And on Instagram, particularly, a lot of the accounts that I follow are fashion related. You know, fashion and, and beauty, they go hand in hand, right? Fashion inspires beauty and beauty helps prop up the fashion industry. So it's, you know, it's a hand in a glove situation. You know, throughout the year on Instagram, I save images, I compile lists of things on my wish list, on my Essence app, and even on matches sometimes. But then when the sale season starts, so that's typically at the beginning of the summer around June, July, and it just recently ended at the end of August, and then come Singles Day or Remembrance Day on 11-11, there's going to be another surge of sales that's going to go into the new year, right? So those are like the two times of year where I'm hunting and looking for those things that I, I find value in. The first item is these pairs of loafers from Valentino Garavani, and these are called the V Logo Chain calfskin loafer. Now I got them in the dark brown. They do come in black and currently on the Valentino website, they no longer stock the brown ones. That's a double win for me. Not only did I get them discounted, I also got them in a colorway that looks like was seasonal. Amazing. And it's a very rich, deep shade of brown. So I know that I can wear these with denim, any number of things, and it's going to look great no matter what shade of jeans I have on. They are a bit flashy. The V logo is a bit in your face. So the V logo is old iconography from Valentino. In the early days when it was Pier Paolo and Maria Grazia, there was no logo, it was just the studs. Now it's very much V logo front and center. And just as a comparison, I'm going to show you what these look like compared to uh, a Gucci loafer. I think these ones are called, I don't know if they're Jordan or Princeton, but just so you can see how the silhouette differs. These ones are more uh, classic. They're kind of like a, or a Gucci 1953, which is the classic silhouette of the Gucci loafer. The leather is quite smooth and it's not patent but it has a little bit of like a sheen to the leather. And absolutely, as these get older, they're gonna look even better. They're quite stiff, so I haven't really gotten a chance to break them in. I'm gonna wear them most likely on nights out, definitely with jeans. I can see a couple of different looks that I have in my head. So this is a fun fact. So Valentino shoes, when you buy men's, they always come in a black box. Mine's came in the red box because in fact, I did find the 40 in the women's and that's where I found the deepest discount. So I have that luxury. You may know some women who are able to buy children's shoes. Well, if I can find a big size in a woman's shoe that is gender neutral, I can pull it off. Um, so yeah, that's just a little fun fact for you um, because the men's ones weren't as heavily discounted as the women's ones. So sometimes I do take my eyes onto the women's shoe section to see if I could find um, the, the ladies' versions of the men's styles. So the next item that I bought in this summer sale was these Pierre Hardy's. These are called the 112 peaches and cream. So Pierre Hardy, I don't think it's a lot of love, but I love Pierre Hardy's shoes. I think he still designs the, the shoes at Hermes. And he also designed the, the lipstick cases at the Hermes Beauty. I've been eyeing these particular styles, the 112s for ages. And somehow these shoes were reduced by like 60%. I bought these at the very end of the sale. And that's one of the other things is if you can hold out long enough, that's naturally when the discounts are at their steepest. And I was quite lucky to find these at such a heavily reduced discounted price because this style, unlike Valentino, who's very seasonal, styles come and go very quickly. Pierre Hardy's uh, 112 shoes have been going forever. From the time when I started to become aware of the brand, these were my gateway to Pierre Hardy. I worked with a couple of women who had some really cool shoes with like geometric uh, gold cubes and different things like that. 
So I always knew of the brand, but this was the shoe that really put me on. And I love the cube motif. It's all over the sole of the shoe. I also kind of consider sometimes, should I get a, a box bag, a little tiny thing where you can put your phone and your wallet in, and it looks really sweet. Aside from these shoes, because these are very much hype shoes, the brand is very, um, if you know, you know. And I'm also eyeing these Cubic sneakers, which is a new style that they came out with. So I always stay on the Pierre Hardy Instagram. There's always interesting styles and things happening over there, but he's a legend his brand is amazing the prices even regular price it's not too scary but yeah definitely this was a real f gem this was like the diamond in the rough to find a classic pierre hardy shoe reduced by 60 percent was a miracle i used to wear an adidas stan smith mid which was been about the same height as these these because there is the velcro strap at the top you do have the laces and there's the zip on the side it's very easy to slip on and off once you get the lacing the laces positioned just right you can remove the shoes quite easily as opposed to having to undo the laces every single time you want to wear these shoes so i appreciate that one feature i also have a pair of walk in dior shoes that are high top they're like the Kristen dior chuck tees with the jador all over the laces so just as a comparison so you can see how high they look an absolute win if i ever saw it and the last thing is this shirt so this shirt i bought with the intention of wearing for the beyonce show and since then i've also worn it to <laughs> And then Juna D party, I did try to hang it in the, the shower when I was getting ready for this video, but it hasn't smoothed out. But I need to do a better job of taking care of this because um, this is my first silk item. I had a couple of uh, Versace inspired shirts from uh, from Zara and it, it completely different, right? Like polyester silk, it's, it's absolutely day and night, right? This is highly breathable. I would love to have an entire cruise or holiday collection of cohorts from this brand. The prints are incredible. The fabric feels really, really nice. I'm obsessed with this brand. When it came on my periphery, I was like, oh, this is, it's got my name all over it. I'm gonna share with you a screen grab and a link to a blog from the Farfetch website where they interviewed a few men and each one of them was showing you how they styled their shirts and they're all different heights, different sort of physiques. This was a really good guide. I am 173 centimeters or 5'8", so I wear a medium. It's a very loose and very slouchy shirt, so a medium is still oversized on my frame, but this is something you wanna wear really relaxed. I was really pleased with this shirt. I only wish I got the shorts that went along with it, but there were no sizes. Too bad, so sad. This is something that I bought in the last round of sales at the end of spring. And I just wanted to highlight this just to kind of give you some more context in terms of my taste. There is a style of sunglasses. Typically, I always used to buy Persol. Persol was my go-to brand when it came to sunglasses. I have a couple of pairs that I've had for nearly 10 years and they're still in good condition. And now I've gone on to Oliver Peoples is my new brand of choice. But a year or two ago, it came up on the Valentino account. They had this style of glasses that just set my head spinning. They're called uh, 22s or XXIIs. They're just the perfect Wayfair style of glass. I have these in black. These are the brown. There is a third colorway, which is like a Havana or like a light tortoise, which I would like to get my hands on if they do get reduced again, uh, only to put my, my prescription frames in them. If you didn't know, um, in terms of optical, right, uh, Luxottica is the, is the behemoth. They're the ones who own all the licenses to all the optical brands, very much the way L'Oreal has all the licenses to all the designer fragrances. And then after Luxottica is Cefilo, they have a number of fashion houses that they license to. And Valentino, I think they still have glasses sold at Sunglass Hut, so they may still have a partnership with Luxottica, but it's looking like they're transitioning to this other brand, Akoni, which is a Swiss brand, and they produce all the glasses in Japan versus Italy. Don't know. Very interesting, but this material, it's a very heavyweight acetate. 
And for me, if the glasses are light, not interested, I need something really heavy. It makes it feel more substantial and it makes it feel as if it has more value for some reason. I don't know. But these glasses are perfection. I'm not usually a designer sunglass person, but what I liked about these is it just has six rock studs, two on the arms, one on the hinge, and then on the one arm behind the temple, it does say Valentino in very tiny letters. It's a very nondescript pair of sunglasses that come in this really humongous leather case. I hardly ever take it out. I usually just put these in the pouch and just kind of go off about my day or, you know, put them on and hold them in my hands. But the pouch that they came in and the box, it's really ornate. Keep in mind also that with the, the changes in um, how the fashion houses are moving. So for example, I brought this to my friend's attention last time. Aside from optical, you can no longer get Saint Laurent apparel or accessory shoes on Essence any longer. They've stopped selling it completely in the last two years. This speaks to some of the changes that we're going to see in fashion is that a lot of brands are taking everything in-house. You can only buy through their outlets. They're still going to have sales at the end of every season, but they're really controlling um, the distribution and the prices that exist in the marketplace because I think if you're trying to maintain a certain level of um, in, in your consumer's mind, you have to really control the prices that people are paying. Because if I am able to get a pair of SL shoes for $500, um, but SL thinks that I should have paid 15 for them, you know, that that really dilutes their brand to some extent. And I think that's what's going to happen with a lot of brands. In particular, Valentino is really good for discounts. But as of the last two months or three months, caring bought 30% of the Valentino business with an aim of taking over from the Qatari um, investment group that owns it. So we may see less and less Valentino product on sale in the next few years, unfortunately. So just a good to know, right? like kind of keep an eye on what's happening in the landscape. I knew about this whole wholesale thing happening with um, the brick and mortars where luxury brands were no longer doing concessions in department stores. They were only doing shop and shops. You know, they're also doing this thing online where very strict rules about how they wholesale, who they wholesale to and what discounts the wholesaler can offer. So very interesting times. That's just a quick little roundup of some of the things that I found in the sales. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank my shirt for speaking. And I will catch you in the next one. Adios.